to Morningside Uniting Church. Every time we gather, we light this candle because Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is here with us. Now please join me in the call to worship. O Lord, open our lips. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Let everything you do or say be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. The prayer is from a world vision. Dear Lord, we lift to you our concern for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from coronavirus, COVID-19, the elderly and people with chronic health conditions. Protect them from harm and be their comfort in this time of uncertainty. Jesus, in your ministry on earth, you showed your power and caring by healing people of all ages and stations of life from physical and mental and spiritual ailment. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of the virus. May they feel your power of healing through the care of all the medical staff. Dear Lord, take away the fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under self-isolation. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. In Christ's powerful name, Amen. Now let us sing our opening hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us continue to confess in silence. Amen. Hear the word of forgiveness. God says, I will make a covenant of peace with you. My dwelling place shall be with you, and I will be your God. Therefore, hear God's word of grace to all of us this morning. In Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Today's Bible reading is from John Chapter 9, verse 1 to verse 12. John chapter 9. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. 
Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash, so I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Since we don't have a face-to-face -face service at church on Sundays, uh, and uh, it uh, gives me uh, some kind of freedom uh, to uh, record my message anywhere and anytime. I'm sitting in my, uh, my, uh, my living room and uh, recording uh, this message for this Sunday. Today's Bible reading is from uh, John chapter 9. It is about Jesus and a, uh, and a blind man. And when uh, Jesus and his disciples was traveling around and uh, when they got to uh, this point, uh, they met uh, this blind man. The disciple had a question for Jesus because uh, this man was born blind. So disciples asked Jesus whether it was his fault that he was born blind or it was uh, his parents' fault. And Jesus gave an answer to them right away. He said, Neither his nor, nor his parents, but for the works of God. My understanding of his answer is that he was born blind so that he may glorify the name of the Lord. Well, it's a question uh, from me. He was born blind and then his uh, uh, ability and then the things that he could do was limited then how he could uh, glorify the name of the Lord well actually it's uh, I'm not sure uh, what uh, he had been doing but uh, obviously he uh, didn't do anything for the glory of God until he met Jesus Christ when he met Jesus Christ and when he obeyed to his instructions of going down to the pool of Siloam and washed himself. And because of his obedience and trust, and he was able to see afterward. And then he began his own ministry, let me put it that way, his own ministry of telling people of what happened to him. So by telling people uh, about what happened to him, uh, he was able to uh, glorify the name of the Lord because no one was able to uh, give him his sight. But Jesus gave him his sight to see. It is obvious that uh, he never saw his face, the face of his parents, but after meeting Jesus, and after obeying and trusting him by going down and washing himself in the pool of Siloam, he was able to see his face, face of his parents, and also he saw the face of Jesus Christ. In our Christian life, we face some kind of challenges and difficult times and also, uh, we, uh, uh, nowadays, uh, we have uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic and all over the world. So we wonder why God let this happen to many people in the world. The fatality is over 10,000 people all over the world. Especially uh, certain countries like China and South Korea and Italy and Spain. Thousands and thousands of people got infected by this virus and more people got, in, got themselves isolated and how about medical staff they don't have this virus but they isolated themselves in hospitals and in, in care centers so that they could look after patients 
so many stories going around nowadays because of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. So we wonder why God let this happen to us nowadays. Is it our fault? Or is it someone else's fault? Well, same answer. I believe that uh, Jesus would give to us. Well, it's not your fault, but for the works of God. So that's what I'm thinking. What kind of work that God is performing through us, and especially through Christians and through churches. Well, as you know, people in all over the world, and they are so panicked, and so they uh, started uh, uh, holding, and that's the word that the Prime Minister used, and they stop holding, and they just uh, stacking up uh, all, the, all, all the goods, and food, and, and, and uh, well, I, I hate to say this, but the toilet papers, and uh, you know, everything, it's the hand sanitizers, and everything. Well, in this crisis and in this chaos, and people have become so selfish. And so for Christians, a message for Christians is so obvious that we are called to share with others. And we are called to pray for others. And we are called to look after others, our neighbors, and our brothers and sisters, in Christ. Even though we don't have a Sunday service face to face, the Sunday service on, sun, uh, on Sundays, but church is open. I've decided to open our church doors every morning from 10 to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And so that people may come to pray, to pray for themselves and to pray for others and their family members and friends as well. And because I want to uh, uh, provide a, a space, a place for anyone and everyone, and where they can come to pray to God, and where they can come to think of themselves, and also the future of Australia, and also also, I think about their family members living in uh, different cities and different areas and places. The call is obvious for Christians that we are here in the middle of this crisis and chaos to be the light and the salt. As light shines upon everyone, no one can hide from the sun. So we shine upon everyone, including strangers and someone we don't know. But as a good Samaritans, we offer them our care and our prayer. And so this is what I'm thinking. As Jesus told this blind man, go to the pool of Siloam, and go wash yourself. Maybe morning side church is the pool of Siloam for many people, where people come to receive the power, the healing power that Jesus has, and where people come to receive uh, this uh, reconciling power that Jesus has for uh, any, uh, any broken relationships. So many people, uh, they have been depressed, and isolated, feeling isolated, and loneliness has affected on many lives of people. So church, Morningside Church has become this pool of Ceylon. And where they come, and where they are welcome, and also where they are blessed, and where they experience the presence of God and the moving spirit just resting upon them. And also where they hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. 
I just googled the word Siloam and I found out that uh, there is a place called Siloam in Australia. In South Australia, near uh, City Beach Port, and there is a salt lake by the ocean. The density of salt is seven times heavier and thicker. And it's a, it's a nice sized lake, and salt lake, and so a lot of people go there to bathe. And I don't know who started, but the people started calling the lake, the lake of Ceylon. Some kind of mystery, and also a miracle that the people expect. Because this is a different salt lake from others, seven times heavy and thicker, there might be a healing power that, that we, might, we may receive. And so people started calling the lake, the lake of Siloam. I pray and I hope the Morningside United Church continue to be the pool of Siloam for many people. People come to Morningside Church and receive the healing power of God in Jesus Christ and people come to Morningside Uniting Church and to experience the moving spirit the helping spirit coming upon them and Morningside Church continues to be a place for many 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 people where people can enjoy their good memories and good friendship and fellowship and where people come to uh, how can I say that it's uh, people come to a north for sure their future the eternal life in the house of God and also where people receive uh, a comfort and acceptance and understanding and also where people come to receive the grace and mercy and love and forgiveness of God abundantly today's Bible reading John chapter 9 this blind man met Jesus And he learned two things. That it wasn't his fault that he was born blind. So he was, Jesus set him free from all the accusations and, 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 and faulty myth that he might have carried for a long time. And the second thing is, because he obeyed and trusted the instructions of Jesus Christ by going down and by washing himself in the pool of Siloam, he was able to see. So morning side of church, we have met Jesus Christ and we have received this instruction from Jesus and we are on our way to become the pool of Siloam for ourselves and for many others. So friends in Christ, let us continue to serve God by serving others and let us continue to love God by loving others. May God bless you. Amen. Now let us pray for one another.
Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his followers, the Lord's Prayer. As we conclude our service this morning, now let us sing our closing hymn, A Breath of Life Comes Sweeping Through Us. of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And as we do so, may the blessing of the Holy Trinity of love be upon you, the fire of the Spirit to ignite you, the love of God to encircle you, and the wisdom of Christ to enliven you this day and evermore. Amen. And God bless you.